কি অবিশ্বস্ত জীবন ছিল আমরা ফ্ল্যাট বিজলি এগুলো কিচ্ছু ছিল না আমরা একটা অন্ধকার জগতেরই মানুষ আমাদের বাচ্চাদেরকেও স্কুলে ভর্তি করাইতে গেলেও মিথ্যা পরিচয় দিয়ে ভর্তি করাইতে হয় আমাদের কোনো ডকুমেন্ট নেই কোনো প্রশাসন নেই কোনো ঠিকানা ছিল না সিটের মধ্যে আমরা বেশি কথা বলতে পারি বাইরের মানুষজন আসে এদেরকে নির্যাতন করত আমরা এমন একটা গৃহবন্দী হিসেবে থাকি তারা ছিল রাষ্ট্রহীন As late as the 21st century, more than 54,000 people lived in a state of confusion, unsure which country they belonged to. This was not a hostile border. These were peaceful neighbors, friends for nearly half a century, Bangladesh and India, except for those enclaves or chitmahals. What exactly is an enclave? According to international law, it is a country or part of a country that is wholly within the boundaries of another country. For the people who live in an enclave, life can be complicated. Who responds to your needs? More immediately, what is your identity? This is a very unfortunate. If he says that I am from Bangladesh, then he will be a joke because he doesn't have any relationship with Bangladesh. And if he says that I am from India, तो वो भी झूठ होगा। On the Bangladesh-India border, there were daily reminders. How does it feel to be in the dark when your neighbor's home is well lit, even though all that separates you is a line on a map? ऐतुगुलो बच्चों पढ़ाचुने कोड़ी थी आमादेर लाइफ ही कुनो दिन विद्युतीर आलोय अमर पढ़ाचुने कुत्ते पारी नहीं। कारण आम्रा एक टा अंधोकार जगतीरी मानुष। there were social difficulties too. We were in school, we had a lot of fun. 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 Bear in mind that these were normal things, normal times. What if things didn't go right? Which law would protect you? We had a lot of fun. 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 এই এলাকাতে ছিল অনেক সময় আমাদের অপরাধীদের আশ্রয়স্থল এই সিট মহলে আশ্রয় নিতে নুফলে আমরা সেই মাদক চুরাচালান বন্ধ করতে পারতাম না। Those enclaves were like a kind of island for them also and for us also because there was no fencing around it. There used to be no literally literally no vessel. How did this incredibly complex situation arise? A popular legend blames a game of chess between two kings, wagering pockets of land. In fact, the enclaves were created by a series of 18th century peace treaties between the Mughal Empire and the Kingdom of Kuch Bihar. They existed peacefully, if absurdly, for centuries. Then, the lines of partition ran right through this mess. Some enclaves became Indian, some Pakistani. The government of India and Pakistan made some efforts to solve this, but they led nowhere. Then, in 1971, East Pakistan became Bangladesh. For the enclaves, the close ties between India and Bangladesh brought renewed hopes of settlement. Yet, resolution proved elusive, and the problems lingered into a new century. This agreement has been pending uh, since 1974, when it was signed between uh, the then uh, Prime Ministers uh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. But three elements of that agreement could not be implemented relating to demarcation of the boundary, adverse positions and enclaves because of interpretations of the agreement. Along with the changing outlook of the enclave dwellers, there was a change in Delhi and Dhaka too. A new generation of bureaucrats, diplomats and politicians 
was resolute about resolving this long-standing tangle. The biggest challenge that we faced in the time uh, from 2014 till uh, 2015 was uh, building awareness of what the protocol and uh, agreement actually meant, securing the free and full consent of all the state governments that were involved and which were uh, directly impacted by this. Uh, and then uh, for the external affairs minister to actually pilot this bill through parliament. The background work, stagnant for decades, began flowing again. Now all that was needed was the will to accept uneven transfer of land. In 2015, with the new government in New Delhi, that bold final step was in place. On May the 7th, 2015, India's parliament unanimously ratified the draft treaty originally framed in 1974. In India's parliament, there was not a single objecting vote. Not just the government of the day, but all of India put humanity ahead of territory. Many residents found themselves in a different country. Some opted to leave their homes in order to remain in India. Most, though, stayed where they were, the land of their ancestors. Borders shifted, but the bonds shaped by millennia of shared history would continue to endure. At last, the day had come for those who had decided to move to India. Now since uh, they have already got integrated with the part of India, now they are eligible for any other scheme which is applicable to any other citizen of this country. Naturally, that floodgate has been opened. Starting life afresh is never easy. For those who had chosen to leave their homes and join their fortunes to India, they were basics to be taken care of. Shelter first. Camps were built to provide dignified housing for the period of transition. Cooked food was provided for one month. Next comes land, perhaps the most important for the farmer. Once identified and acquired, this will be transferred to our new compatriots. The former enclaves also craved that recognizable symbol of permanence, a postal address. The new citizens now have free access to the welfare programs of the Indian state. Anganwadi centers provide support for young children with health care, supplementary nutrition and preschool education. Work in rural areas is often hard to come by. The former enclave dwellers are now entitled to the benefits of the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. Other projects were initiated, self-help groups, skill development, but then came the West Bengal state elections. Several programs were halted to conform to India's tough electoral code of conduct. Rather than being disappointed, the people were elated. This was their chance to participate in the most sacred ritual of a democracy. Despite the enormous efforts, there are still some problems that remain. Some families have been separated by the new borders. The Indian government has made extra efforts to resolve this, always putting people first. 
Some of the listed migrants never showed up. They stayed put, realizing that emotional bonds are hard to break. They are now proud citizens of Bangladesh. After all, this is an accord of equals, two nations maturely dropping their differences and working together for the benefit of people. In the former enclaves, life is fast returning to normal. The old ways go on finding equilibrium with the new. In time, this will all be history. Lines on a map or a simple narrative. Today, however, it is a story of people, of individuals dreaming magnificent dreams and waiting patiently for borders to dissolve and for humanity to triumph. Vodila. Vodila, when I've been for a Vodila, Vodila, just a Nagarilla. I love the Nagarilla. 